Hello everyone. I thought today we can have a walkthrough, not necessarily a tutorial, but I'll just use the software in an intended way and you can have a look how I'm using it. Maybe it'll answer some questions, maybe it'll help you decide how you're going to run your reloading process or how this software can help you. So our use case is we bought a rifle, we bought some ammo, and then we're going to do some cartridge um, development for this rifle. So first thing first, uh, do I need to ask for support? No, not really. Excellent. So I bought a rifle. Uh, you'll see I actually have quite a bit of test data for other things, but we are going to be doing things from scratch. So I bought a new rifle. I'm going to be skipping some fields, which are not mandatory and uh, just in the interest of time, but I encourage everyone to fill in as much data as possible uh, because that, that helps the software make decisions for you and present you know, the, the right information, the right reporting. So I bought Ruger, uh, model is Ranch, and action type is Bolt, and caliber is 5.56 NATO. Uh, barrel length is 16 point. 12 inches and the barrel twist is 8. Uh, we can also add a picture of a rifle in here and upload that and I already have some sighting systems as um, defined so we can assign those through here. So we'll assign a 12 pound scope and here it is so the rifle is saved uh, if we go back, we'll see that there's a little red flag that means rifle requires maintenance. Uh, it's a brand new rifle. We'll probably need to clean the barrel. So say we run a boar snake through it, save it, close. If we go back, the red flag is gone. That means the maintenance has uh, been registered with the software. Uh, next thing we're going to do is we'll say we bought some ammo with the rifle and it's, uh, let's say, Winchester 2350, which is the wrench pack. We'll let a note, wrench pack. And we'll say it's 150 rounds uh, with a 55 grain bullet. And we actually know the advertised velocity, so we'll add that as well because more information better than the caliber. So we'll save this as well. Uh, oops, Winchester white box. And the bullet type is FMJ. All right, so we have our ammo. We save that. So here it is. And actually what we can do is we can add pictures just to, just to make it look better. Here it is. Uh, at this point, we went to a shooting range and we shot, let's say, 50 rounds of this ammunition through the rifle. So we can actually say that here. So we've shot 50 rounds through our Ruger. Up, oh, wrong Ruger. Uh, where is it? Right here. Close. Update. And we'll see that the quantities are dynamically updated in here. We'll also see that um, rifle has a round count on its barrel. At this point, we can say, well, actually, I have 50 cases now, so let's add um, some cases. So Winchester 223, sorry, Winchester, Caliber 223 Remington. Uh, we say we fired it in our Ruger. Uh, it's been fired once and we have 50 cases. Uh, quantity actual, there's a tutorial about uh, how to use case management. So you can have a look at that. Um, but at this point, I think we're good. So the only thing we're going to say is we um, shoulder bump the case and nothing else. Save. Uh, now we're ready to build cartridges. So I actually have uh, some tests that are defined. So there's uh, not wrong primers. Uh, we have some 
small rifle primers right here. We have uh, two to three projectiles, and we have correct powder, um, also known as Varget. So at this point, we can start creating a load development recipe. Let's say recipes uh, Ruger two to three, and we'll start with twenty two grains and a 55 grain bullet. Uh, that, that just has to make sense to you. Uh, we'll add a group. Uh, actually, we already have a group, but uh, so we can just use this one. And it's good to associate recipes to a particular group because um, it makes it easier to generate load uh, letter testing, uh, sorry, letter reports. So we'll say the firearm is Ruger. We'll select our cases, so we'll say, um, oops, case is this one here, projectile is Sierra, uh, primer will say small rifle, and powder will use to two weight. Charge weight will start at 22 grains, and we'll say, um, Some load website. This is just a note to tell you or remind you where you found this this charge weight just for safety. And we'll save we've loaded 10 cartridges. And we'll save this. We can actually go a lot further than that and we can start adding overall length. Uh, and then once we shoot those, we can add performance information as well. But at this point, this is this is good. So we'll come out. And we see this recipe here. So what we can do now, because we want to do a load um, letter test, we'll copy this. We want to make four more groups. And we'll say that um, this one is 23 grains. This one is... 24 grains, and I know that's huge jumps, but I'm just demonstrating, and this will be 25 grains. It's just easier to do in extremes just to demonstrate what it can do. Uh, when we're creating clones, um, the this is not an exact copy, and that's done for safety reasons, just to avoid complacency. So a clone removes two bits of information, charge weight and total cartridges loaded. So we'll say charge weight here is uh, 23, and we've loaded 10 cartridges. We'll save that. We'll come out. We'll do the rest of them here. Uh, so this one is 24. And this one is 25 we'll do is we'll open them in new tabs and update or make sure that we have 10 cartridges per load data so 10 10 and of course in reality you'd be going a lot slower than that because uh, you'd be considering what and how and how many groups for our purposes, this is good. So here it is. At this point, we can look at an individual recipe, and we can, if we just shooting one particular set, like this 25 grain set, we can print a box label. And in the future, this reports will also and labels will have QR codes, so you can scan them and end up in the actual part of the application that you <clears throat> that you're looking at. Uh, you can print the full report as well if you want to have a look at the specific sort of full details of everything. And at this point, we'll also pay attention that our powder has reduced, so we're keeping track of powder. We'll notice that um, projectiles that we used have been also used. Same for cases and same for primers. Um, so if we're going back into our recipes, and instead of going into a recipe, we're going to a recipe group. 
we can actually do a letter report. So we can do an experiment. So we can click this icon here. We say our base recipe will be our first one. Everything else is assumed to be the same except for one variable. In our case, it's powder. And we're going to generate a report. And that will be our letter testing report. So a marker is something physical, like uh, you can paint it red, blue, purple, just so you know um, which cartridge is which. And if you paint a base of a cartridge in a blue, then you put a blue mark in here, and then you know that anything blue is this recipe here. So that's um, that's it. And, and actually, you can do a bunch of different experiments, not just powder. Seating, like, um, seating depth, uh, sorry, not powder. We're actually interested in charge, not powder. Yep, that looks a lot better. Um, and that's about it. I mean, other things we can do once we're happy with it, we can say that this one shot the best, so we can set it as favorite, and we can lock it, so that's it. No one's, well, we won't be able to edit it until we unlock it. And then let's say we go to the shooting range, and we want to shoot this. So we're obviously not going to have a computer with us, but we might have a tablet. So we can switch to a touch screen view. We can once again go into our group. Say so we're shooting um, this particular group here, 22 grain. So we'll edit it. And now we can start filling in performance. You can say we've shot it on this day. Our best group was, I don't know, one inch. Uh, at a hundred yards, you can do this individually, or um, you can do this. You can pre-calculate it and say, well, our average velocity was one, two, three, four, or you can start adding individual velocities, and it will the software will calculate this information for you. Uh, I've shot two groups. Uh, sorry, I've shot two groups of five rounds each. And if you want to fill in a direction, you can do that as well. Uh, sighting systems, uh, if you have a scope which is sighted in for something and you just want to re record the adjustments, we can say two clicks up. And of course, we can fill in the weather and say shot well. See targets attached, and we can. Uh, I don't have any photos of targets, but we can. Yeah, I'm just going to put a random picture in here. But we can upload random images and uh, pretend that it's a target. Update, and here it is. And we can also, if we're using a tablet, of course, we can increase the screen real estate and whatnot. And that's it. I'm just going to switch back to ta um, table view just because it's easier to, to do on the computer. But this is also why we use images just to give us visual cues and it looks a lot better. Now, if we go back to rifles, we'll also notice that our round count has increased. And uh, we'll notice that our case has been fired twice now. So it keeps track of all that stuff. And I think that's about it for now. I think this is a reasonably good but very long walkthrough. And uh, I'll be going into individual features and writing or recording tutorials about um, specific features now, just so to make it easier and to break it up a little bit. But for now, I think that's it. Thanks all. Talk to you later.